In this video, how I installed this sconce above these light switches, stick around. So the goal here was to install the sconce above this set of switches here. So I'm going to take the cover plate off, see what I had to work with. Before I could do that though, I had to kill the power to that light switch section. To confirm power wasn't there, I used a voltmeter and I attached one of the legs to each screw and the other leg to a grounded piece of metal on the switch, made sure there was no power in any of those switches there. So in this case, I had three switches. This first switch covered the fan light and the fan power. The middle switch was a three-way switch, which I wasn't using, and then I had a regular other switch. So in this case, I'm gonna get rid of this middle switch, and then I'm gonna put in a new switch for my sconce. Now, I know there's a stud on one side of this light switch box, and so I use this little probe to figure out where that's at, and then I can mark where the stud is, and then I know that I have space on the other side of the stud to work with. And then just to transfer the line where that stud is, I just use a level, make a mark up top, and then I can also confirm with a stud finder as well. And then again, this just confirms the space in the wall that I have to work with and gives me an idea where I can put the sconce. So I use some painter's tape, and then I get my new light box. And this is a old work light box. I just trace it and then I connect the lines with a small level, and then I score my lines with a razor, and then I end up coming back and scoring several more times, and then I can come and knock that whole piece of drywall out, and I have a nice hole to work with. Now I'm gonna take out the switches down here to see what's going on here, and I just remove the screws, and then pop them all out, and in this case, this one switch here controls the lights and the fan power. So that's why my middle three-way switch isn't used. So that's why I can take advantage of this extra space here. So just gonna pull these switches out and then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that three-way switch. Just cut it out and then I cap off the wires with wire nuts because I'm going to leave this wire in there just in case I wanna use the three-way setup down the road. And then I come back and I actually mark those wires so I know what they are if I do reinstall a three-way switch. Mark the traveler wires and I mark the common wire as well. And then once they're marked, I can put them out of the way for the time being. Now what I'm going to do is feed some Romex up from this light switch box up to the, the new light box where the Scots is going to be installed. So I gotta poke through the box and there's usually some sort of um, way to do that. In this case, you gotta pry open a little lever and then you can feed the wire through. So I tried to feed the wire through first, but I was having a hard time getting the Romex wire up. So I had to come back with a, um, a feed basically and push that all the way up. And then I got that out and then I could tape off the Romex to the wire feed and then pull that back down with the Romex on it and then this is providing my wire to the light box and then to my switch. Now I can take my tape off and I can install the new old work light box. And the way this works is there's little tabs on the bottom when you put it in the drywall these tabs come out and then when you screw down it snugs that box to the wall against the drywall so they work pretty well pretty simple concept but they work extremely well but i have to put the romex through the box first pull that out and then i can go ahead and screw this box into position and this will be where i install my scots while i'm here i'm going to go ahead and strip this wire to expose the wires within i've got three wires a black a white and a ground I can clean all those up, get rid of this little piece of cardboard here, and now I will strip about a half inch or so off the black and the white wire. Now I'm going to go ahead and just install the bracket for my sconce. So basically it comes with some screws. Those screws go conveniently into the light box, and I can snug those down. And then just to make sure it's nice and level, I, I use a, a little level to figure that out. And then I start connecting the light fixture itself. I start with the ground, I twist that and then use a wire nut to get it on. Then I connect the two black wires and tighten those down really good with some pliers. Then I use a wire nut and tighten it down even further. 
Then I connect the neutrals, the white wires together, again use the pliers, and then come back in the wire nut and tighten that down several, several turns. And then the light fixture is connected to the new wire. Then I just push it all back in, and then my fixture can be snugged down with the little trim caps that come with it, and we have an installed fixture. I'm gonna go ahead and put the light bulb in now as well. I use a nice little LED vintage type ball here. Just a glass dome, snugs down with these little nubs like this, pretty easy. And in here what I did is I just hid the, the old three-way wire switches. And now I'm stripping the new wire that goes up to my new Scots light. And I'm gonna strip the black and the white wires again. Push those to the side for now. Those are the wires that go up to the new light. And then I'm gonna mess with this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect all the neutrals together. And basically everything in this box is on the same circuit. So they all need to share a neutral. So I just attach all the white wires together and then come back with a big wire nut and snug that down several times so it's nice and secure. Now I'm going to start to install the new light switch for the sconce, but I'm going to attach that to the fan switch as well. So they're gonna share the neutral, they're gonna share the ground. So I'm gonna pigtail those to another piece of copper wire. So basically I'm turning two grounds into one just to simplify the installation here. And then now that I have the one ground wire, I can connect that after I snug it in real good with a wire nut. I can connect that to the rest of the grounds in the box. So I just take that wire that I just wrapped up, wrap that up against all the other ground wires, and then snug it down really good with the wire nut. So now all my grounds are in. Now I need to get power to the new switch. So again, I cut about an eight inch piece of 14 gauge wire and I strip each end and I put it in the pinch connector on the, on the power inside of the switch. And in this case, I strip the wire halfway because I'm actually gonna connect this power in wire to the power in on a normal switch as well. And essentially I'm doing the same thing here as I'm making one power wire feed both of these switches and then I can connect that one wire to the rest of the power wires in this box here. It just kind of simplifies it. Once I get all the black wires together, I crunch them down with the pliers, spin it several times, get a big wire nut, and again, I spin it several times, making it super tight, and now all the hots in are connected. Now I gotta take this switch out hot to the light up, and then that just snaps into the pinch connector in the back of the light, and then I can install all of the switches, just screw them back in, good to go and just put on the cover plate and everything is good and dandy. And there we go, we have a sconce light. So that's essentially what I did here. So thanks for watching, I'm Joe Kistel. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.